Welcome back to Canadian Justice, where we're discussing the law on police searches and the limits of those searches. Uh, so, Sina, in this case, RV Steers, um, for specificity, when that arrest took place, did the police go into a different room of the house to find these drugs that he was charged of having a possession of? Or, or were the drugs sort of right there to see in the room where he was arrested? So I think that's a, an important factor to figure out here. And the facts are crucial as they give light to meaning. What happened in that instance was police knocked on the door, didn't get a response. And then they went in, uh, announced that they were there. And the victim came out, but the uh, accused, Mr. Stairs, did not. And he ran past them and went and uh, put himself in the laundry room in the basement and remained there. What police then did uh, was when they were going to the laundry room, they simply did a scan of the living room that was in the basement quickly for officer safety, as uh, Ari has told us, and they go and effect the arrest. At that point, they do a scan of the laundry room itself. They don't see any other individuals there. And it's thereafter, when once the arrest is effective, that they then go to a different room, being the uh, living room in the basement, where they conduct their search. Now, the officer indicated that when he looked at the room uh, peripherally, he wasn't able to see whether there was anyone behind the TV or the couch. And he went for a closer inspection and didn't need to move anything and in plain sight was able to see these two items of contraband. Importantly, at trial when he testified, he was not able to say in cross-examination whether uh, he was, uh, where, where he found the methamphetamine specifically behind the couch. And more importantly, he wasn't even able to say whether he had found it before or after Mr. Stairs was already cuffed and under arrest. So Ari, for the purposes of the analysis, would it have mattered if they'd found the drugs before while they were making sure the room was secure um, or if they found them after? Does that change the analysis and, and should it? So Christine, you asked the key question. My understanding that the Supreme Court took it in their minds that they did this scan of the room. I use air quotes. The scan of the room after the man was in handcuffs. That's really important because that's when the catch up of officer safety comes into play. Remember, cops are going to cop and lawyers are going to lawyer. The cop's number one idea is that they're going to go home at night. But the way this case is presented to a court is that we're going to find the evidence. And once the evidence is found, we're going to say officer safety. Why? We're going to say we didn't know if somebody was in the other room. We didn't know if there were three Freddy Kruegers and two Jason the Terribles that were going to pop out. Now, this happens. Every defense lawyer who's done this for decades will tell you that this is a term that's used all the time. I've had cases where three cops are in, a, in a, somebody's apartment and nobody's looking around. And then a sergeant comes and takes a look around and magically finds somebody. How did they justify it? Officer safety. I didn't know if somebody was hiding there. So to the precision of your question, it is very important that the person was in handcuffs at that moment. The threat is neutralized. They then do a scan. They don't say it's in plain view. But again, remember, police officers and lawyers have a disconnect. We're going to argue about all this after the fact. The police want to look around and have a sniff around and take some evidence out. That, in my view, is where the Supreme Court, again, keeps this area open by saying, look, say the magical words officer safety, and we'll tend to give you the benefit of that doubt. And many people will probably think that's a good thing. So let's go briefly to, to what the Supreme Court held. Um, Sina, the, the court held that the search that found these methamphetamines was reasonable. Um, can you explain the reasoning of the Supreme Court here just really briefly? We'll get into the actual test itself in the next segment, but, but can you briefly kind of summarize what the holding was? Indeed, it was uh, a departure from what the Supreme Court itself had said in a prior case uh, called McDonald years earlier. And effectively, they held that it was reasonable and the officer's conduct was reasonable uh, because it wasn't such a high infringement on this heightened uh, reasonable expectation of privacy that you have against search and seizure uh, within your home. Uh, Ari, anything you want to add there? We've got about 30 seconds. Yeah, I think it's really important here that people understand the term subjective and objective. 
The court is still going to look at whether the officer believed their life could be in danger. Somebody could pop out from behind a TV or another room. But it also has to be objectively reasonable. And that's really where the courts tend to bend over backwards at times to say, look, we're going to take the officer at their word. They didn't know who's in the house. They didn't have the architectural schematics. But when you have somebody under arrest for domestic, the woman is thought to be safe. The man's in handcuffs. There seems to be to be a disconnect there. We, we got to go to break, but we'll be right back.